In this section, we'll look at some of the benefits and disadvantages of pesticide use. One of the primary benefits of pesticides is that they have, in fact, saved lives. With uh, the invention of DDT and many other insecticides, many people's lives have been saved due to prevention of malaria, bubonic plague, and typhus. This map of the world shows where malaria is still an issue and concern. You can see that that is mostly in Africa, a little bit in Asia, and small sections of South America as well. Some of the other, other benefits of pesticides include increasing the food supply, increased profits for rural farmers for uh, increasing yields, essentially. The, at one another advantage of pesticides is they do have a long shelf life. They will last a long time, so no need to replace them just because you've had them for a while. And they are um, easy to apply, and there are lower health risks if used properly, uh, such as having the right uh, equipment on when you're applying them, applying them in the correct amounts and at the correct uh, coverage. Newer methods of pesticides are safer and more effective, and as we've talked before, those genetically modified strains offer a type of natural, and I put that in quotes uh, if you want to think of genetically modified as natural, um, natural pesticides uh, within the DNA of some various crops. Some of the disadvantages include that it does accelerate the development of genetic resistance that um, we've had to use stronger and stronger um, uh, pesticides and create newer and newer types of pesticides because the bugs keep getting stronger and stronger. Uh, some people refer to them as super bugs and super weeds that are becoming more and more resistant to whatever type of pesticide, and, uh, including insecticides and herbicides that we use. One of the reasons for this is that bugs have a very uh, quick, rapid breeding time, and so they can develop immunity very quickly because they've had multiple generations in the span of just as little as five years. Some of the other disadvantages are that it does put farmers on what we consider a financial treadmill. They have to pay for pest control, and that pest control becomes less and less effective. So even though these things last a long time, they may not be as effective as they once were because the insects and weeds have uh, become resistant to them. Another disadvantage is that they can kill natural predators and parasites that wouldn't normally help to naturally con control the pest population. And another big disadvantage is that they don't go exactly where we want them to go. Uh, the USDA, the Department of Agriculture, reports that over 95% of insecticides and herbicides don't actually reach their intended target due to improper application um, and using excess amounts uh, runoff and other issues. Some other disadvantages, they can harm wild, wildlife, and that includes honeybees, birds, and fish, and they could also um, harm endangered species. Other threats include the threat to human health. Um, agricultures, agricultural workers in developing countries often don't have the education and equipment and safety uh, devices to apply them properly. You can uh, cause illness from exposure, and um, often in, in the U.S., in fact, that there are um, many accidental poisonings and death. Um, many people have uh, most of the poisonings, accidental poisonings in typical home uh, may come from pesticides stored improperly. And the National Academy of Sciences actually reports that there could be as many as 20,000 cases of cancer per year due to pesticide use. There is certainly a controversy when it comes to pesticide use and, and with some groups that are for pesticides saying one thing and groups that are against pesticides saying another. Uh, a researcher from Cornell University uh, claims that crop losses from insects actually have increased from 7% to 13% during the time of DDT and all of our applications of many industrial pesticides from 1942 to 1997. Uh, despite all of this money invested, despite all of these, this new technology, that we actually have lost more crops during that time. The International Food Policy Research Institute also says that the environmental health and social costs are five to ten dollars in damages for every dollar spent on pesticides. Uh, they claim that alternative pest management would cut by half 
the use of chemical pesticides without reducing crop yields. Mm -hmm. So, you know, should we be spending all this money on synthetic pesticides when there are other techniques that we could use? Some of the consequences of pesticides, always, of course, the law of unintended consequences, as we learned with our parachuting cats into Borneo scenario. They do stop malaria with EDT, um, as we saw with the cats in Borneo, but the result in the chain of events um, realized that there were other problems created that were not intended um, due to the application of DDT to get rid of the malaria. Some of the laws that govern the use of pesticides are um, really governed by the, uh, the EPA, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and the Food and Drug Administration. There are over 25,000 different commercial pesticide pro uh, products. The acts that involve um, pesticide control are the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act, known as FERFA. It was first enacted in 1947 and then um, updated in 1972. Part of this act requires the EPA to assess the health risks of these 25,000 different commercial pesticides, but unfortunately less than 10% of the active ingredients have been tested uh, for their long-term effects, and this is primarily due to a lack of funding for this bill. The Food Quality Protection Act of 1996 also uh, has a big impact on pesticide use, and this required the EPA to reduce allowed levels of pesticide use uh, residue on food by a factor of 10 if there's inadequate information on the potential harm to children. So um, kind of if you think about this act in addition to FERFA, FERFA's um, role is to set those limits. Again, they don't have limits for many of those. And so the Food Quality Protection Act is kind of like erring on the side of caution and saying if you don't if we don't know what the effects are, then we're not going to allow that pesticide residue uh, to be on our, our food that would harm children. The EPA has used FERFA to ban at least 64 active pesticides, uh, that should say from 1972 to 2009, including DDT. Um, many people still uh, claim that DDT is one of the best pesticides, but it is no longer used. In the United States, they basically banned DDT and many of the other chlorinated hydrocarbon pesticides. Um, we still have other classes of pesticides, those organophosphates, but most of the chlorinated hydrocarbon pesticides have been banned. Another issue, you know, continuing issue with pesticides is that it's just poorly enforced. Another issue with pesticide regulation is that um, and they can be produced in one country and exported to another. So, for example, even though DDT use is outlawed in the United States, um, we can still manufacture it here as long as we don't sell it here. So we can sell it to other countries, and we do, in fact, do that. We actually export quite a lot of pesticides to China, but then the kind of interesting point is then we import food from, from China, and so that pesticide residue may actually be still on the food that we ingest because we then import the food that has that pesticide on. An international convention is called the Rotterdam Convention that was a treaty that restricts chemical use in, including pesticides. Uh, this is again one of those international treaties that the U.S. is not a member of. So what can we do to reduce our use of pesticides? Uh, there are many different things we can do, including those in areas of biological, ecological, and other alternatives. One is to essentially fool the pest. Um, but if we rotate crops, um, insects tend to go back to the same place over and over again. So if we rotate our crops and vary the planting times even by as little as a few weeks, that will trick the pest into not having that access to that food when they think they will. and cause less of them to survive. Others are to encourage pest enemies to plant diversity um, and uh, provide habitat for natural en enemies. So uh, having a wide variety of plants, avoiding those planting monocultures, that gives home for other natural enemies. We can implant that genetic resistance. These would be ge those gene genetically modified organisms that we are inbreeding with um, 
uh, herbicide and pesticide resistant qualities to them. We can actually bring in natural enemies. We can import predators. We can import parasites and disease-causing bacteria. This has been one area where many people in the U.S. with the uh, Pennsylvania with the growth of the stink bugs said, "What's, you know, what uh, from Asia is a predator of the stink bugs, and can, should we bring that here to get rid of our stink bug population?" Other alternatives you are using insect perfumes. These are basically pheromones that uh, lure pests into traps and you see this quite a bit with uh, the stink bug traps or a big uh, uh, pesticide now that we have that are using um, lures to, uh, to those stink bugs. We can actually bring in hormones to control development at various stages so by um, altering their reproduction rates. Um, we can reduce our herbicide use by using crop rotation methods again uh, no-till farming and adding mulches. The overall policy of integrated pest management is really one way to lower our use of, of these synthetic pesticides. Integrated pest management is a extensive technique that evaluates crops and pests as part of an overall system. In this integrated pest management, IPM it's referred to, um, is we use cultivation biological chemical tools and techniques to produce an individual plan for every situation. The goal is to reduce crop damage to what would be considered a tolerable level. Uh, what can we lose without it really affecting our bottom line essentially. This does require constant monitoring and possible addition of insecticides and herbicides but only if needed. You can see that this is a pretty complex um, process that you have to look at all of these areas. When are you going to plant? How are you going to prepare the soil? What sort of records are you going to keep? What are the forecasts you're going to have? How are you going to control the pests? Monitoring what thresholds are you going to have to say this is uh, too much loss that I'm going to have? Uh, what are the biological controls we have? What are the chemical controls that we have? So it's a very complex process. In um, integrated pest management, we have seen a lot of solutions here. Indonesia, in fact, has banned 57 of 66 pesticides. They've launched an integrated pest management system, and their pesticide use has dropped by 65%, while rice production has increased by 15%. Sweden and Denmark also have implemented an IPM program. Cuba uses organic farming to grow crops with IPM techniques. Brazil has reduced its pesticide use on soybeans by 90% using IPM. So some of the solutions, we can reduce our input of fertilizer and irrigation water. We can slow the development of genetic resistance. We can prevent pollution from pesticides. Some of the opposition, it does require education. You can't just go into this with uh, just a, on, a, on a wing and a prayer, essentially. You have to know what you're doing, and the initial cost may be higher. Government subsidies may help this um, um, as far as conventional pesticides, so there is a shortage of, of experts on integrated pest management, so it does take some education, and we have to get the government away from subsidizing the conventional pesticide, chemical pesticides. In the U.S., tax for pesticides could be used to fund research and education. We could set up some uh, integrated pest management demo farms around the country and train the USDA farm agents to help farmers. And the UN and the World Bank have joined to establish an IPM facility and promote and provide information and research. So there are solutions to our use of pesticides. We just have to determine if we want to reduce our use of pesticides and see how the benefits uh, can help us in the long run.